Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Sally Pinto and I'm from the Yonkers North, neighborhood naturally occurring retirement community. We launched back in January of 2020 and we're here to serve seniors 60 plus in Northeast Yonkers. We have lots of fun programs and activities and we also have a lot of resources for you as well. Our programs include meditation chair yoga, uh, body mind fitness, bingo, and any other programs that you might be interested in, like arts and gardening. We have our resource specialist, Alexa Smith, who can help you with finding services and activities out there for you, as well as our nurse, Barbara Simone, who can help answer your health-related questions. We're here for you, we're here for our community, and we look forward to seeing you in our programs. Enjoy. Hello, everybody. I'm Alexa Smith, the resource specialist with the Yonkers Mark. I'm here to help with application assistance, referrals for home delivered meals, and transportation services will be coming soon. We also um, offer Zoom activities and Zoom programs. And if you have any other questions or concerns, I'm here to help. Thank you so much and enjoy the program. Welcome, I'm Barbara Simone, registered nurse. I recently retired from Westchester County's health department as a public health nurse. I am now here to try to assist you with any medical, or preventive care issues. Enjoy this program and I'm looking forward to working with you. Let me, before we get started, I have to use my mind and turn upside down because I like to be upside down. I'm upside down. There we go. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen really quick so that you can see what we're going to draw today. This is what we're going to draw. Not that. Yes. All right. Can oh, can anyone see that? Yeah. There we go. Can anyone see that? Yes. I'm assuming. Yes. 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 Great okay. cats. Two yes. cats cuddling up. Yep. So mother and father, mother and daughter, or father and son. I don't know what what the genders are, but I want you to take a look at something here. So um, you, you're going to just follow me when I'm drawing. So don't worry about it. Don't do anything yet. I just want you to see that. This is all based on shapes, right? You got the circle here. You have ovals within here. You can, I don't know if you can see my mouse. Um, and you could also, oh, mouse, cat, mouse. See that? Cat and mouse, get it? Anyway, um, there's a triangle here in the nose, triangle here in the nose. There's circles here. We're going to use shapes to, 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 show, to draw this, right? You can see there's a triangle right here, circle, lines, curves. Line, curves, circles, triangles, squares. Maybe not, much, not many squares here today, but this is all this is. Now with the fur, we're going to leave the fur. Usually if we were just doing a drawing, we'll be, we would be drawing the fur and everything. We're gonna leave the fur out of our actual drawing and save that for me coloring, all right? So that's gonna be the fun part, is actually coloring it in these, this fur. So let's get started. All right, so uh, can someone tell me, well, never mind. I'm just gonna talk. Um, so what we usually do is we start off with sketching, right? Sketching. Basically what sketching is, is the art of using light lines. Instead of drawing very dark and, and pressing down hard on the page, you start off by drawing very light using light lines. We call that sketching. So we're gonna start off with sketching. Okay, so don't worry about the fact that you can't see the cat. I can see the cat. You're gonna just follow along with me. So if there's any questions before we get started, now is your chance. If you have any questions while we're drawing, you can always either, you, will, you can type in the chat and someone Z or someone will see it and let me know, or you can just raise your hand, your digital hand, or you can just interrupt and say, I got a question. All right, so let's get started. So you have your page. So this portion of the page leaves some room over on, on the left side for the kitten, right? So we're gonna utilize our page. We're not going to be scared of, of drawing big, right? So just draw a nice light, big circle right here at the edge of the page, right? Doesn't have to be a perfect, perfect uh, circle. 
right? And then let me know if I go too fast. Let me know if you can't see. I know I'm drawing very light, so you probably can't see, but let me know everything, okay? So right down the middle, so the cat is laying down as you remember, right? So the middle of the cat's face is right here, right? So usually we draw our line straight down the middle, but being that the cat is to the side, this is the top of the cat's head right here. So we're gonna draw a line, very light line. This is the line we're gonna erase later on, right down the middle. You can even go a little bit past it because we, this is gonna, this is where the mouth is gonna be, right down here, right? So I want you to draw a nice little curved line like this, right about here. The reason why we're curving the line is like to show that the head is a three-dimensional object. So the, 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 the slight line here is the eye line, right? It's gonna be very light, right? So right here on, on this, we're gonna draw the first eye and I'm gonna just give you a reminder of what we're drawing here so you can see it. Right, you see that, how that, that line is very curved right here. So before we draw the circle, we can just draw this part right here, right? So I want you to draw a nice curve right above the eye line. Again, let me know if, you, if I'm going too fast. We're gonna go ahead and draw the other eye too, right? on the other side of that line, curve up. All right, now we can draw our circle and make sure the circle meets the top of that eye, that, that, that line, that curve line, the top of the circle. So it's almost like a half circle. It's hitting the top of that. All right, very light so you can control it. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. You don't have to break out your compasses and your rulers. It does not have to be perfect because art is subjective. It is what it is. And now right underneath the eye, you're gonna curve right around here and you're gonna darken in the sides of the eyeball, right? And you can darken in the bottom half bottom of the circle and just darkening these parts. The, the, the drawing a cat's eye is so much different. Well, it's similar, but a little bit different than drawing human eyes, all right? So right on the center here, and we're drawing, we're really taking a chance here and, and going out of our comfort zone because usually we're used to drawing like this, right down the middle. So we're gonna actually challenge ourselves and draw this cat laying on his side as she, I'm gonna say she's a she, is cuddling with her daughter, right? So you're gonna draw a nice little oval right in the center here of these eyes, a, it's an oval, just like, you know, a cat's eye, right? You can go ahead and cut, but what, before you color that in, right? So we're gonna, we're about to color this uh, with our pencil, we're gonna color in the, this, these eyeballs, all right? But before you do that, I want you to draw another little circle here. This symbolizes the light shimmer on the eye. And hopefully we'll get a chance to really color this in and you'll get to see how cool this is gonna look in the end when we start to do the color. Just draw a nice little circle here. That symbolizes the, sh the light shimmer reflection coming from the light on the eye. And then now around the, 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 the oval that was the eye, the pupil, you can color that in. So how am I doing? Am I, am I going too fast? Let me know if I'm going too fast. Anyone? Maybe you, will, you don't want to say anything. You don't want to feel like you're the only one. So if I'm going too fast, let me know. Thumbs up if this is a good speed. This is a good speed. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Whoever said that. All right. There we go. So we have our eyeball. We can go ahead and, and uh, really touch it up a little bit. Okay, so being that this is like, if we were drawing a lion, this next piece would be bigger, but being as a cat, this is different between drawing a big cat and small cats is the size of the nose. The lion's nose is a lot wider. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna help us out with, I'm just going very lightly, you're gonna draw a sideways pyramid or a triangle. 
and then a smaller one on the bottom of it going the opposite direction. Very small. This cat's noses are very tiny. That's what makes them so cute. All right, so you got a pyramid or a triangle going one direction and then a smaller one going the other. And this is going to help us to draw our nose. But before we do that, I want you to right about here, draw a circle, a light circle, and another light circle. So as you can see, this drawing is all about shapes, putting the shapes together. You can draw another circle. Very light. We'll go into details later and start to create the mouth and everything and make it work. We'll make it very light. Sketch it out. Very light. Okay. And now as we go into the nose, we're gonna let me see if I can zoom in. Can I, I wish I can zoom in? There we go. Hopefully that. All right, so. As we start to um, give shape to this nose, we're gonna start here. You see the start here, and then you're gonna come, you're gonna kind of curve it around like that. Just do a nice little curve on the top of that or the bottom of that upside down pyramid. All right, a little curve, and you're gonna draw the nostrils, which is gonna, gonna come around, come back down, come up, come around, and connect it. See that? We'll do it again. So we've got a curve on the top, and you come curve around to, to hook it, do a little hook for the nostrils, you can color that into it. Curve around, come back around, hook it again, and connect it and color that in for the nostrils. I hope everyone was able to follow me on that. And then on the bottom of that nose, a little line right there. I don't know what that's called. I don't, I'm not good with cat anatomy, but I don't know what that's called. I'm sure that has a name, All right? Somebody named it. All right, so we're gonna just leave this this triangle there because later on we're gonna when we color we're gonna you know get into that. All right, so right here is a little line that goes right down as we start to create the mouth. So you're just gonna draw a curve. You know, so start to draw the mouth. And we could put little dots here for where the whiskers are going to come out of. We'll do the whiskers later, all right? So um, for the bottom of the mouth, you're gonna just draw the fur and you're just gonna follow along that circle, the bottom of that circle that we created earlier. You're just gonna follow along and create a little fur and you can draw little lines, curved lines to indicate the fur. Same with this, I don't know what this part of the cat's mouth is called. I'm sure this has a name as well, but whatever this part is called, you're just gonna, I already gotta do my research and figure out what, what these part, parts of the anatomy is called in cats. But this little fur part here on the mouth, and then you're gonna come around All right, we're gonna leave that right there like that because we're gonna come back to this. All right, let's leave that alone for now. All right, because this is where the baby's, the kitten's face is gonna be. All right. All right, so he's laying or she is laying on her face. So it's not gonna be a full face. It's gonna be kind of crushed by the weight of the, um, whatever she's laying on. So. We're gonna draw a little fur here like this. It doesn't have to be exact, it's a little indication of fur. And then you're gonna kind of flatten it out here because this is where she's laying, right? She's laying on her face, the side of her head, right? So I'm gonna hold off on the ears for now. The ears are up here, but I'm gonna hold off on that because I wanna to get to the kitten, all right? So this is gonna be a little bit more out of our comfort zone because we're not, we're used to drawing a face, we're used to drawing a face straight on like this. So I'll fix that up a little bit. Let's 
touching up my eyes, you can do the same. If you turn your page this way, you can kind of see where your mistakes are and fix it. Our eyes have been a little too big. I'm just gonna touch it up a little bit. You can do the same. Take this time to fix whatever you need to fix. My eyes a little wide, look like anime right now. All right. So we're used to drawing straight up like this. So now we're about to draw the her kitten laying and her head is gonna be up a little bit. So we're gonna to have to really think outside the box here. All right, so right along here, we're gonna draw a nice, so her face, I'll give you another reminder of what we're looking at here. And right, so this is what we're about to draw. That beautiful face right here, look at that. You see how her head is going up and to the side. So I want you to really take a look at this. We're gonna draw a circle, right? And then we're gonna draw a line curving right around here like this. Instead of drawing the line straight down the middle like we usually do, we're gonna draw the line curving right here to show the center of the kitten's face. You see that? And then the eye line that we used to draw, we used to draw it straight across. This time we're gonna draw it curving up and down. You see that? How, the, how I want you to look at that, right? And then the triangle is a triangle right there, a smaller triangle, a little circle here, circle here, circle here. That's what we're gonna do. So when you see me draw the curve line, make it try curves to show the circumference of the kitten's face, right? So that's what we're gonna do. Try to get it right. So very lightly draw a circle. You can go over it a few times to get it right. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just like that, All right? And as I said, the, the curve line, her face is a little going that way a little bit. So the line's gonna start in the center and curve a little bit to the right. Our right, her left, to the right like that. Curve, like just like how I showed you. And then the eye line's gonna curve up and around. Then the nose is right about here, so you can do a little circle. And then in that circle, I'll give you a chance to, yeah, I feel like I'm going too fast, so I'll, I'll give you a chance. So circle, I, uh, straight line or curve line like that. Looks like a Pokemon ball right now. And then curve the eye line. Yes, R2, I know, I know, don't worry, we'll get to it. So a little curve line like that for the eyes, a circle. And inside the circle, I want you to draw a small upside down triangle, which is going to be the nose. It's gonna help us draw the nose. See that? And then right here, circle, another circle, another circle. That's gonna help us to draw the mouth, all right? Now her eyes are kind of close, so we're not gonna get a chance to do all that stuff that we did. So we're gonna just, Draw the shape of the cat's eye right here. And this one's gonna be a little bit smaller because it's further away. All about, it's called perspective. Perspective of this eye is a little bit smaller. So you're just gonna, a little curve, and you're just gonna color it in because her eye is closed, but it's slightly open at the same time. But you really can't see the details of the eyes because of it, right? So you're just gonna color that in. She almost looks like she's smiling. I'm assuming she's a she. All right, so you're gonna curve. So for this pyramid, this upside down triangle pyramid for the, for the nose, you're gonna curve it up a little bit because of the angle it's on. And then you're gonna do the same thing we did with this nose, but we're just gonna do it for up here. You're gonna curve it around, come down, hook it back around with the nostrils and then connect it. And then draw the little line in the middle. Right now, for this mouth, we're going to draw a little line in the middle. It's going to just come halfway, curve a little bit down, and stop right there. Right. 
not going to go all the way around because we'll do what we'll handle all that in color. Okay, and you can draw your little lines for where the whiskers are going to go. I don't know if we'll get to finish this today, but it's okay. And you're going to draw the for the head. Move my hand out of the way. Draw the head. Draw like little fur. And here, you're just going to indicate a little bit of the fur. You're not going to go all the way around like how we did. You're just going to do, just indicate where the fur is, the mouth is, and connect it. So her little ears just curve around for her ears, curve, connect it right there. And do another curve, connect it right there, her ears. She has smaller ears, okay? And the different colors, we're gonna, all that stuff that you see in the cat's face, in the kitten's face, we're gonna do all that in color. I'm gonna leave that alone right now. If we were just drawing a color, a pencil drawing, we, we would go in and start shading all that, but we're gonna leave it alone. Okay. all that all right so let's go draw our mother's ears so right about here i guess you can turn it this way if you want make it easier for yourself right right above the eye you come right about here and then just from a line you come around here like this and then Bring the ears down and do our top right hip. Then we're going to draw the fur that's behind. Connecting the, the mother to the daughter. And all of this is going to be for all inside of her ears. Just put it all in there. Okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to touch it, touch it up a little bit. Just draw the head. Continue to draw the head. And then here, you can just draw a pillow or whatever it is. So you're not gonna see the other ear. Whatever she's laying down. Okay, so once you've touch that up, we're gonna leave all this because we're gonna do all this in color, right? But the lines that we don't need, like that triangle, the line in the middle, the eye line, we can go ahead and erase those. Because those were just there to help us to develop our drawings. We can now get rid of it. Just erase around things you need, get rid of the things you don't need. Same thing with the kitten. All right. We're going to have fun now. Now the fun begins. Hopefully. Assuming it goes well. Okay. okay, I'm going to start off with this brown. brown. It doesn't look like brown in the dark here, but it's brown. 
trust me. I'm going to start off with Brown. Very lightly, I'm going to start off. You got to make sure it's light so that when, you, when you're going to apply the different layers of fur and contrast and shading and fur, all of that stuff, you want to make sure that it's going to come through. So you're going to lay down the, 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 the you're going to lay down the, um, the foundation color, right? That brown in there, you're going to lay it down, but then this, this white, as you can see, there's lighter shades in there and darker shades in there. So we're going to lay that on later. So right now we're just going, we're going to very lightly lay down the, um, the brown color. Right, very lightly, because we want to be able to see the other colors. So very lightly. We're going to color them one by one. So we're just going to start off with, with the mama cat. Very lightly color that in. Do not color over the mouth, because we want to keep that a different color. It's going to be white. So we're going to get into the details of the different layers and fur shading of the cat. So just lay this down. Very lightly. I have this thing underneath, so it's kind of creating some uh, unwanted texture. So I'm gonna lay another piece of paper down. So hopefully that'll help. Sometimes you can use that as a technique and it'll, it'll work for you, but I don't really want that right now. So just lay this down, it's initial. Okay, so now what I wanna do is for the nose, you see how we, it's, it gets a little darker in between here. Before I use a different color, still using this, this same color, I'm going to use a little bit more pressure to create shading and to create um, texture, right? So right about here, I'm gonna go in a little darker. And I'm using these, this, these strokes to indicate the fur. And the, and the nose bone that's underneath the fur. So we purposely left all of this so that we can get into it with the, with the shading. We're gonna come back in and add some darker colors, some black or whatever highlight these different shades that the cat has. So remember, we're using these, we're also using strokes that indicate some fur. So like these strokey lines and then color it in, stroke lines, color it in. We're about to go ahead and use a different color to give us some texture.
for the sake of time, I'm gonna hold off on finishing this part, but you can get the picture. I'm gonna continue doing that on my own time. I, I, wanna, I don't want time to run out on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take I'm going to take my black and just as a reminder, what are we going to do now? Is we're going to go in and really get in here and get all that in there. These little black parts here, going to some strokes here for the, for these parts. We're going to really shade in this these parts. Get that get that texture. This, the, the beauty of these cats is how the different colors lay on top of each other. Even these cats are is art. Or are art. Right? All that black. All right? That's what we're about to do. Okay. So let's start with the eyes. We're gonna go back in here. Really get in there. All the parts that was colored in with the black, we're gonna go in there and highlight and get, get in dark. Make those eyes pop. And if you want, you can turn it to the side. Like I said, you can turn it this way. However, whatever makes it easier for you. You can start doing some self-correction here. Once you turn it to the side, you can just kind of see where you made your mistakes here. I can see some mistakes. I'm kind of fixing it as I'm coloring it in. You can even bring this eye in a little bit more because of the pressure from her laying on her face kind of crushed her eye a little bit. As you can see here, see how that, that left eye kind of crushes a little bit. You can even go ahead and take the liberties of doing that if you want. Give it a realistic feel. And then come back around here and start adding our strokes to indicate the fur. go back and enjoy the pupils. Now you're gonna leave that white part alone. The little, the white um, reflection that we did earlier, that little shimmer, the light shimmer. And you're gonna just color in the pupils behind it. All right, now before we continue, I do wanna get in, I don't want time to run out of us before we get to these eyes. So. What I wanna do is hold off on this black. We're gonna do more black, right? But let's take a break from this. Put your black down and grab, hmm, we're gonna grab a, a yellow. I mean, like I said, I'm kind of limited. So I'm gonna take, we're gonna take yellow and we're gonna take the orange. We're gonna blend these together. So let's start with the yellow. So the behind the pupils and be, behind that white shimmer, I want you to just, Color in very lightly, very use light strokes. The eye, the eyeball. And keep that white shimmer. That shimmer is important. So it can pop and it can really look like a reflection, light reflection. Then you're going to take the orange and right around the edges. You're gonna, just the edge, you're not gonna, you're just gonna curve around and bl kind of blend it together to give it a nice marble looking look. It's right around the edges. I 
if you can see mine, but hopefully you can see yours. I can see you on my end, but I don't think it's the orange is coming through on the camera. You see how the eye looks now? It looks, and if you really want to get get um, creative, if you have a little piece, of, if you have a little white out, just a little dab will do you. Just dab right there where that. white thing is and let it dry. That looks like a reflection or a, let it pop. Looks like crystal marble little technique. I, I know I didn't tell you to bring white out, but if you have white out, you can do that. Or you can just leave it the way it was, see that? All right, so let's go back to our black. And go back in and start to I want to get these stripes in here and get some of this part in there. All right, so that's what we're going to do. But we're not going to waste too much, too much time. And look at this, that, that little texture that was coming in on my, I got by accident. I think I'm going to use, utilize it. As Bob Ross would say, happy mistakes. Uh, see if I can do it on purpose now. So we're going to, just draw, you're going to stroke it out. You can start, we had used light lines for the bottom. So you can, you can use the actual dark lines here, strokes to show the fur. And underneath, once you do that, you can also kind of shade it in a little bit. You can kind of blend it in. That's why I like color pencils. I have a lot of control over what I use, over the colors that, that you know, my strokes. You can draw the fur in between. You can take liberties. It doesn't have to look exactly like the drawing too. You can interpret it any way you like. I'm taking liberties here. I'm not. I'm not trying to do a photocopy of this drawing. I kind of want it to be look like my style a little bit. I do appreciate those who can make a drawing look exactly like the picture, but I feel like if I wanted my drawing to look exactly like the picture, I'll just take a picture of it. Though I do respect those that can do that. That is not my skill set. All right, you can. Go ahead and blend those in, some fur. All right, so you get the picture. I'm not gonna spend my whole, the rest of this time doing this. I'm gonna continue that on my own. But what I do wanna do is take that orange, I mean that yellow, right? And very lightly take the, you see that black and then that brown that we have? Very lightly go over it and this is gonna create a blending effect. And you can continue going back in and putting more black and more brown and as you as you like. I'm just helping you to, to create the foundation and you can do the rest on your own, finish it off. But I think you got the picture. All right, and I go back in with the brown. And the more you add on top of it, it starts to blend together. Back in the black. Not using your own judgment. All right. So um, we we have fifteen minutes left. So I want to get started on coloring in the uh, the kitten. It's a different color here. All right. I lost my picture here. All right, here we go. So you can see kitten is a little bit more black. So I'm gonna take the black, but we're, we're gonna use very light lines, light strokes, and we're gonna just kind of color in this part here around the edges very lightly. Very light. Don't use dark lines yet. We will use dark later. You want to just keep it. And then around the eyes, there was a little 
proper indications here. Keep this part white. Color around. Just like that. Color around. These lines, you can, you, you can create dark lines. We're just doing the outline of the fur. And then go back in, stroke it out. In. You can go from, from using dark lines to light lines, all based on what you're doing. You can darken in this part of the ear. You can outline the, the, the original fur that we did, and slightly color that in like this. And you can go back in and fur it out. Use some shading, shading techniques here where the, where the kitten connects with the cat. Shade that in, creating shadow. Some of it is shadow, some of it is fur. It's all blended in together. But you can use this one pencil to do all, to indicate all that. And you can just Again, this does not have to be perfect. We're not trying to do a photograph here. So if you have a white color pencil, what I want you to do is take your white color pencil and then go in here and create a blending effect. For some reason, for some reason, my mind didn't come with a white color pencil. So I'm gonna use my charcoal. I do have white charcoal. So white charcoal can get messy sometimes. So I'm just gonna go in there. and blend that in, a little blend. So that's creating a, a like a fur, a fur effect. It's a good thing about mixing mediums. You put the, the you put the um, charcoal on top of the color pencil and it creates another effect. Blend that in there. And now um, the, the black has gotten onto my, um, my charcoal, which I'm okay with because I can now use this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that black and white that's on that, that got on my charcoal. I'm gonna go ahead here and just use it. Blend it in and create a, sh a shading technique here. Happy mistakes. As Mr. Ross always says, and you just make a nice, beautiful mess right here. All right, go back to my color pencil. I'm gonna go back over with the, the eye. That closed the eye. Darkened it in. So we're going switching from darkening to using, using light lines and using dark lines. Back, you got to know, kind of use your own judgment, know when to use what. You go in here and you can shade in a little bit. I hope you're all keeping up. If you're not, let me know. I feel like I'm going fast. I'm kind of using instincts and teaching at the same time. So let me know if I'm going too fast. So if you look at this drawing, the, the cat, cat's fur kind of goes all the way behind, behind her. So you can, we're gonna use our brown, we're gonna use our brown to kind of bring in more of that fur behind the kitten. 
So I'm just going to use my use my brown to indicate imperfectly the fur that goes behind her that she's laying so softly on and so comfortably. This kitten looks like she's in bliss. And the mother looks like I need to protect my child no matter what. So if you are thinking about hurting my child, don't even think about it. If I had to guess what she was thinking, that's what I would say she was thinking. Looking at the photographer like, I don't know what you're doing. Whatever that machine is you got in front of me, you better not do anything to harm my child. The kitten is just chilling. Back and forth from your brown to your black, from your black to your brown to your yellow. All creating blending effects. Using your own judgment, you don't have to follow me exact, but you kind of, that's kind of giving you a guide so you can go ahead and do this on your own. So I think we are pretty much finished with the, the rest of this, this drawing is just about you finishing up, you know, the touching up, you know, in here, right? And with, the, with, with this part of the cat, you can use your black. If you have gray, that gray would work better. I don't have gray, but you can use your black to, Highlight this area and then kind of blend it slowly. If you have gray, kind of go around like that, very lightly, creating a shadow effect, shading effect. Same thing with this part. And have it have a darker tones here and kind of lightly come out. The more you, you come out, the lighter you get. Leave it white. Leave the rest of it white. It's all about illusion, creating the illusion of, of shading and shadow. And you can do the same with, with this technique with the kitten, right? And if you want to use that technique I said earlier with the charcoal, you can, creating a blending effect. Send it all in. All right. So I want you to continue to work on the fur and blending it and make, making it come alive. While we're doing that, does anyone have any questions as uh, we have about nine minutes left, eight, nine minutes left? Anyone have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions? If you don't, we'll spend the rest of this time just finishing up what we started using the techniques. Because after we get off, you're gonna have to be on your own on this. I don't know how far you got on your drawing, but I hope I gave you enough so that you can do this, finish it off on your own. I just wanted to get you started. All right, so what I'm gonna do is while we wait, while, while we finish up this, 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 this time, I'm gonna share the screen so you can see the cat, so you can use that as reference as you finish up your drawing. You see this, 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 um, the, the, uh, the cat, you can use red, some red strokes here. I didn't get a chance to get into that, but right around here is red for the kitten. So use some uh, blending techniques as I was saying before, using the yet the red, or an orange or red, or yet, you know, blend it in. Yeah, so. And then when you're finished the drawing, you can take a white pen, a white pen or a white marker and very thin white pen and, and draw the, um, the whiskers. Use a, you don't use a color pencil, but use the actual pen or a marker, very thin and draw the whiskers. We didn't get a chance to do that, but that's gonna be fun. That's gonna, that's gonna, make, it, that's gonna make it come alive. Like how we use the white out, you could use that um, thin white marker for the whiskers. Hi everyone, this is Z from Yonkers Public Library. Thanks so much to Sally Pinto and Alexis and Barbara from Nork. Thank you to our community partners, WJCS, the City of Yonkers Office for the Aging, Westchester County Legislator Ruth Walter, 
Friends of Crestwood Library and Yonkers Public Library for making this phenomenal partnership. And we thank each and every one of you for being part of our wellness community. Be well, stay well. <laughs>